Hello, JFL here from JFL.com, and welcome to this Body Mind Cell Focus on responding to the coronavirus. So, there's been a lot going on lately. And when there is a lot going on, the mind can be particularly active. And that makes sense, it means well. Our mind's job really is to simulate different scenarios to make sure that we're prepared for them. When there is something going on around us that everybody's talking about and it keeps coming up on our phone, we get bombarded by messages and news feeds seem to be filled with nothing else, well then it's not surprising that sometimes the mind can put a lot of bandwidth, a lot of resources into trying to engage with any potential threats. Now, for thousands of years, this was a fairly useful ability our ancestors had. If you're looking at a beautiful landscape, you can see a stream, you can see some trees, and you can see a large wild beast approaching you. It's clear where your attention is going to be drawn. Even though it mightn't be the entirety of the scene, it's the most important part from a threat perception perspective. But even for our ancestors, they instinctively knew that you don't just look at the wild beast and stare at it. You acknowledge it, but then you focus on responding in some sort of a positive way. And we haven't lost that. But what's a bit trickier about today is that sometimes we don't know what to do. It can be a little bit hard. But if you had a leaking water pipe, you'd instinctively know not just to stare at it, but also you wouldn't ignore it. You, you do something in the middle where you acknowledge it, you look at it long enough to understand what's happening. But then you move to responding. You ask the question, okay, well, where's a wrench? Or can I draw on the support of a plumber? Whatever your circumstances are, you look for solutions and you try to progress it forward. So this is, of course, not ignoring the problem. Ironically, staring at the thing is ignoring it. Just looking at that leaking water pipe for a long period of time is ignoring it because we're ignoring the solution, we're ignoring the response. So do allow yourself a bit of room to check in with how you are. Any feelings that this may have been brought up within you? Any particular concerns? Recognize those concerns and be kind to yourself. But rather than getting caught in a spiral of those patterns, like the water pipe, just feel inspired to bring your attention forward in the direction of what the response is, what the best response is in this moment. And there are different options here. On the physical level, of course, taking basic precautions, things like social distancing have their role. And there's lots of good guidelines and simple practical advice that you can follow on that that won't require too much thinking but are useful. But even getting beyond those basic precautions, the important question then is, what is this all about? What is the concern about? And of course, health is what the concern is about. So why not then shift our attention to that, to health, to promoting and building our sense of health and wellness so that we feel a bit better? Checking in on your body, being physically active in simple ways, whatever's possible. You can be flexible, but just to be engaging in it. To be eating well, to be nourishing your body, getting sleep where possible. Of course, all of these things are somewhere on a spectrum. We can't always get a perfect night's sleep and be perfectly nourished to be perfectly fit. That's absolutely okay, but to the degree even a little progress can be made in those areas, you're achieving a number of things. You're obviously more healthy, which is nice at the best of times, but you're also boosting and supporting your immune system as best you can so that you are more resilient to any challenges that are there. And of course, something very important you're doing is on a psychological level then, you're engaging your attention, but not just distracting yourself. A distraction will be looking the other way. But this is engaging your attention in a way that actually helps remedy the concerns that are there to begin with, which is really a win-win. And on that psychological level, it's also useful to I suppose use a moment like this as a little bit of a calibration tool. And what I mean by that is, all too often in a day-to-day -day sense, 
we can be kind of hypnotized by the mundane, by those day-to-day -day things that seem to scale up and take so much of our attention. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that those day-to-day -day things don't matter, but sometimes they matter this much and we treat them as if they matter that much. So this is a useful opportunity to put things a little bit into context and to ask yourself that question. What are you really all about? What matters to you? What are your interests? What do you want over the coming hours, days, weeks and months and years? What are your priorities? Now you don't need to get too caught up in those deeply existential questions, but you can at least use them to create enough space so that you are prioritizing things, so things come a little bit more into focus for you. And then, why not use this space right now to pursue exactly that? If you have time to spare, it's a great opportunity to clarify your goals a bit, draw on supports if you need supports in doing that. Maybe you can fully follow through on that right now, or maybe you can just do the prep work and then later on take it a few steps further. Maybe you can learn now Maybe you can just check in on yourself a little bit more. And it's not just about that personal journey. A big part of this is recognizing the skills and the capacities you have to be able to reach other people as well. Now, sometimes it's obvious if you're a, a skilled healthcare worker, well, then obviously there's lots you're going to be able to do. But we are a community, and there are potentially plenty of abilities that you may have that can be used to support those who are on the front line, so to speak, and just looking after the community at large. To the degree, through your creative or technical abilities that you can inspire other people, you can indirectly increase health and wellness. That is helping, that is making a big difference. So do take the opportunity to reflect on what those skills and capacities and what those things are that you're passionate about and how you might be able to use this as an opportunity to both develop yourself, but also to really support the world, which in turn becomes stronger, and it can support you. It's a beautiful cycle. So, stay well over the coming hours and days. Remember the example of the leaking water pipe. Don't just stare at it. Don't ignore it either. Be aware of what's happening. But then, having gotten the basic gist of it, move to responding in a positive, and an empowering way. If you find these ideas useful, do like, subscribe and share. There's lots more coming in this series, so do keep in touch. And also do share your experience in the comments. What do you think is important in moments like this? What are some opportunities that are presented that can address our core concerns, but in a positive and a proactive way? Feel free to share ideas as well for future topics that you'd like to see explored in a bit more depth.